There's a lot of counting and measuring, distributing of land and tallying of distance and people in Mase, the last chapter in Bamidbar, the Book of Numbers, which makes sense when you think about it. After 40 years wandering from campsite to campsite, from springs to date palms, from wilderness to desert and back again, the Israelites who went forth from Egypt are about to reach their destination. Here in Masse, God gives Moses detailed boundaries that lay out exactly where the Israelites will live when they actually arrive in the land. Each of the 12 tribes are assigned hefty chunks of land. One tribe, however, is left out of the plans, and that's the Levites. The Levites are teachers, judges, construction workers. They're an urban bunch. They're more comfortable amidst the buzz of the crowds on a street than the fields of a farm. God wants them to focus on studying and learning and the work of the temple and doesn't want to burden them with land ownership. City planners have always believed that people's well-being and the harmony of communities are deeply affected by their physical environments. So, instead of giving the Levites a chunk of land, God asks each tribe to give four cities within each of its states to the Levites. Twelve tribes with four Levite cities each, that's a total of 48 cities. There, the Levites will live the urban life, rent-free, while the other tribe leaders get the satisfaction of doing a kind and generous act for an honored group. The Levites are to be the ultimate role models for this new nation, respected and looked to for advice. They're supposed to teach and set the tone of good living through good ethics and wisdom. The Torah insists that, as teachers, the Levites be treated as serious VIPs. We're not allowed to forget how important the teacher is in shaping our society. The Levites will focus on studying and guiding the nation through words of the Torah. And this is when the real city planning kicks in. Each of the 48 Levite cities are models of great design, spirituality, and urban harmony. These are places where one might easily run into neighbors on the street, hear the latest news, shop, go to school, study, all within easy walking distance. Around each of the urban centers sits a ring of open land, ideal for reflecting, thinking, and smelling the roses. This park-like space extends in all directions from the city to create a ring around it. Away from the hustle and bustle of the city, no work takes place here. A great place to take a walk on Shabbat. Beyond that, the Torah states, is another ring of land, just for farms, vineyards, and grazing land for animals. Where there's room for grapes to supply all the wine needed for festivals, blessings, or a last-minute sacrifice, and enough space for fields to supply food for all the people living in the city all close by and organized. In other words, a utopian community. A model society for the respected tribe of Levites, the teachers and learned ones. Even when you don't pay rent in physical money, you still have to hold up your end of the bargain. If the rest of the tribes are to look up to the Levites, then the Levites have to be continued to be worthy of being looked up to. To help in maintaining their spiritual elevation, the Levites are spared from worrying about owning and caring for land. And, in return, everyone else is able to come, hang out, learn, and offer up sacrifices on the Levites' home turf. The Levites are set up in well-thought-out cities with just the right mix of living space, parkland, and farmland. This journey through the urban jungle takes us out of the wilderness of Bamidbar. Stay tuned for the next episode when we crack open Devarim and shift gears from numbers to words. Chazak, chazak, venit hazek. Be strong, be strong, and may we be strengthened.